this energy in somewhere I can find. This shared time spirit's so alive. We found each other and together we have grown. Battled against the odds, but we're a family. When not alone, we see the future in a whole new light. Learning something new is when the fight. Say, can you see? Kids have caught me by surprise We've been together since the day we were born We just realized it's not the sunset of our lives But it's the dawn and though we're up and since I'm with you till the end I'm really lucky you're my friend Say can you see where you'll be with me When life's little mysteries make it hard to see through the maze of I'm Justin Mercer and I'm the director of Stray's Lucky Showtime. Hi, I'm Fiona Flanagan and I'm the producer of Stray's Lucky Showtime. We're based in regional Victoria, Gippsland. And what you're about to watch is a film we've made using our classics and favourite things because we still wanted our cast and crew to be able to be involved in something that was truly Stray's Lucky Showtime and that we're still proud of. The reason why Stress Lucky Showtime had to go down this path was the current pandemic, COVID-19, that we're all facing worldwide. With the fluctuating restrictions Victoria has, means that we've had to adapt our schedule to fit the kids coming and going and having clean spaces and working with the kids to get the flow of the show going. Right. So we'd like to extend our thanks not only to you for watching what we've made, but also to everyone who has helped us put this together. So sit back, relax, enjoy. Thank you. Oh, 
cheek of it. I mean, adopting puppies is all well and good if it's for a coat, but for love and companionship, disgusting. I heard she gives a portion of her money away to charity. Just gives it away and gets nothing in return. Preposterous. A blight on the family name. And she doesn't even grease her hair. Gross city. Order! Order! She'll be here any minute. Oh, hi guys. So lovely to see you all. There she goes again with a sunny disposition. Now, Patricia. Please, Auntie Bunny, call me Patty. I will not. As you know, the Rattray family name has long been associated with the highest standards of decorum. Well said, my love. Uh, uh, they mean is... Uh, what they mean is, you're not exactly living up to our expectations. Whatever do you mean? I've been elected the highest honour of school spirit captain. Spirit captain, well I never. Patricia! Please, Patty. Patricia, since the dawn of time, whenever a hero has arisen, a brave knight on a galleon steed, a lone voice in the descent against the encroaching darkness, the rat trays have been there to oppose them, to crush them, and to grind them into the dust. We're villains, you see, black of heart and menacing of disposition. Look at this coat, 100% pure puppy fur. By God, it's toasty in here. Our oh, willany is a family tradition going back hundreds of years. It's a tradition we expect you will be a part of. But surely not all Rattrays are evil. Every last... <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. One. I don't believe it. Surely if I go back far enough, maybe the family mausoleum? <laughs> Should we be rowed? Well, she'll be hanging around a graveyard for a couple of hours. It's a good start. <laughs> Look where they are now. The witch is witch. Do you have the witch? She's a wild. about that? Introducing 251 time nominee. 44 time winner. Gand Alphaba. It is such an honour to be part of this amazing competition. Such a thrill to be nominated every year. Better sweep that one out. The other four are so great. They're my competition, but also such good friends. Do you get to see them often? Oh no, of course not. Oh. Well, this year we have a six nominee. A Spellman. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, oh, Miss Spellman? How good for her. Such a bold move, straying away from her teaching. The Colville Outreach Hour. <laughs> oh, Perry. Welcome to the Colville Outreach Hour. It's Peter and the Vet here. Today we are welcoming special guests Stephen, Kevin and Jackie from the the local council to the show to talk about our community. Oh, very interesting. What a great way to start the show. Now Stephen, can you give us any details about this community project? Yes, I am capable of providing details. <laughs> and those details would be... Well, it's important to actualise, Peter, that there are a lot of moving parts at this time. And to reveal them all in one hit would put us in a position of calling the kettle black to mix my metaphors. I didn't hear any metaphors there. And I wasn't interested enough to listen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what can you tell us? Well, details at this time are limited due to unknown factors. Such as passing of time and amount of help required. Sounds like the local government is working as hard as usual. Yes, and uh, reading my notes here, what's holding me back on this fully-fledged community project is that, and I quote, it's being fast-tracked to be bucket and spade ready for boots-on-the-ground participation by early or mid to late 2021. 
We're still working on understanding the tensile strength of human musculature. But this will be a great undertaking that will benefit us all. We are looking for able-bodied people with an invested interest in their community to assist. Oh, maybe you can get the scouts and guides to hop in on it. They love helping people out. For next to next. Maybe a project like this will make them responsible citizens. <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, but they are pretty good at demolition. Well, that sounds like a great plan, and if you happen to have any scientific skills, quantum physics, and can provide nutritional information, or maybe you're a builder. Well, <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. If you have any of those skills, give the deputy and mayor a call today. Together, we can make the valley a very, 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 very magical place to live. Thanks. 
So sorry. What was your cause again? The dangers of the magic school bus. Not only does it show a blank disregard for magic rules, but also a blank disregard for basic road rules. Damn, Miss Rizzle, always thinking that she knows best. This year, we have a six nominee, a Spellman. What are your thoughts about that? Wonderful. Exactly what we need, another magical teacher thinking that she knows best. You see, this is what the problem is here. Teachers like Spellman and Frizzle and Umbridge, like, did you see how much that she hurt all those poor innocent children? Well, Dumbledore, with his very, very clear bias about literally everything he does, and his clear favoritism about Gryffindor over, like, when has he ever cared about Hufflepuff? They were just there to be nice. And yet he just goes and up, thousand points to Gryffindor, and doesn't even mean to do anything, or Snape, and his obvious... He hurts his kids, he hurts his students. He does literally everything he can to make it Harry's life a pain. And then... Man, I'm glad to finally get started. All that fuss around a one-day practice hike. What took you so long at the hall? I was just checking for my green raincoat in case it rains. I'd hate to get wet. And speaking of green, where's that new girl? Jessica. There she is, way over there. She's probably having trouble with her pack. Joanna, Michelle, could give her a hand. Her pack? I meant to ask you to look at it before you left. Is it big or something? Big? Her dad had to bring it on a tandem trailer. Come on, you guys have got to see it. You see what I mean? What's in that thing? It's my pack. Dad made it for me last night. Why did he make you a pack? My mum said the other one was too small for all the gear I needed. You let your mum pack your pack? She insisted. But we're only going for one day. She said better be safe than sorry. Colville Stranger. Today, we're going to be talking with some special guests about comments. Yes, please welcome uh, Russell, Wendy, and Joe, combat experts and local stargazers. Uh, hello, um, but we're not here to talk about comments. Uh, uh, you said there was going to be a comment tonight that you wanted to tell people about? Well, actually, what we're going to be seeing tonight is a meteor shower. <laughs> comments, meteors, whatever. <laughs> What is it going to be in our sky, Russ? Well, you see in the sky a... Oh, sorry, it's just... A meteor and a comet are two very different things. A, a comet is a ball of ice, water, and gases that has a regular orbit. Meanwhile, a meteor is... <laughs> sorry, sorry, I am listening. Uh, uh what was that? <laughs> I do that sometimes. Uh, please, continue. Yeah, let's get to what the people really want to know. Aliens, is this... Comet, just a disguise for a UFO? Are they already among us? Do they touch our faces while we're asleep? Well, actually, that feeling at night on your face is more likely to be spiders. An alien craft is probably advanced enough that they wouldn't need a disguise. They just enter our atmosphere without anybody even noticing. So, aliens are going to land in an invisible UFO disguised as a comet, and then begin kidnapping famous people and replacing them with spider pot people by touching their faces. Oh. That's a little far-fetched. All from a tiny asteroid. Well then, an asteroid is different again. Well, let's move on, Russell. Let's tell them what's really interesting about this meteorite. Well, it's a meteorite shower, not a meteorite. Where <laughs> meteorite is boring! <laughs> Exactly, let's shift this focus back to these spacemen. From, From outer, outer space. space. The people here, they try to tear us down. Don't understand what we're on about. 
Three hours. We better have a look. How do you get in it? Look, there's a door in the front. Go hop in there with her, Lorinda, and help pass some stuff out. Wow, it's like the TARDIS in here. I suppose her mother packed her lots of clothes. You had better believe it. Let me guess, Mum packed three jumpers in case one gets wet and you lose the other one, right? Right! And three pairs of jeans for the same reason, right? Right! Also six shirts. Three dresses, two pairs of thick pyjamas, heavy rubber boots, raincoat, her uniform in case we meet the district commissioner, at least ten pairs of socks, and five changes of underwear. Did I miss anything? Only the evening gowns. Mum wasn't sure if we had to dress up for the evening meal. Look where they are now, the witch is witch, to wrap the wind. Welcome back. We have Dumbledore with us. So, Dumbledore, with this being your third magical win in a row, how do you plan to follow that up? I don't know. I sort of feel like I really earned that first one. Well, this year we have a sixth nominee, a Spellman. I'm a Spellman. I'm so glad to hear she's been nominated. I can't think of anyone more deserving of a win. <laughs> Another instant classic from the Perry Collection. Welcome to the Colville Lost and Found Hour. Peter and Lynette here. Today we're on site investigating one of Colville's most persistent urban legends. We're here outside of Conan Caves, where legend has it 35 overly ambitious Joey Scouts met their grisly end. The tale goes that they entered the cave for a spirited day of spelunking to never being seen again. We're joined by noted local crazy person, Sean. Boy! Who denies the very existence of the caves. And the substantially more boring, Nigel. Watcha? <laughs> who claims to have once been a Joey Scout himself. Thanks for joining us, gents. Glad to be here. Always a pleasure to speak the truth to the sheeple. So, Nigel, what is it that you think happened all those years ago? Simple, really. Inexperienced cavers, lots of red lollies, and insufficient risk assessment have combined, and tragedy has occurred. Terribly sad, really. Sean, I understand that you have a very different view of the cave system tragedy. 
Well, totally ridiculous, isn't it? As if Joey Scout leaders wouldn't have done their job correctly. Totally bonkers. And besides, I think it's a bit of a stretch to call it a cave system. It's really just a fairly large rock with a moderately sized divot in it. How do you lose 35 children in a moderately sized divot, you muppet? Well, they drank the water, didn't they? Oh, and the water turned them invisible, did it? It had the magical property to change their molecular structure, had it? Precisely. The water shrinks the space down between their molecules, rendering them invisible to the human eye. Now you're just being paranoid, Sean. This just in, listeners. Don't drink the water. It makes you paranoid. If you drink the water, you'll think they put something in the water. Now back to the matter at hand. What was that? If I had to postulate, I would say that the extensive cave system below us has caused the ground above to become unstable, and the ignorant ramblings of my esteemed compatriot have resulted in something of a minor tectonic shift. Ludicrous! A cave system is really just a minor depression in the rock face wall. This, in combination with my slightly rumbly tum, has caused you to make mountains out of molehills. Actually, more like mole burrows, really. We should also mention, listeners, that Nigel has come up with a guide to some of the effects felt for people who spend too long on site. What were they again? Oh, nothing too serious. Headaches, dizzy spells, dry mouth, spontaneous human combustion, immediate and painful growth of additional limbs, and red spots. Sorry, what were those two in the middle? Ah, uh, dizzy spells and dry mouth. No, not those ones. What about turning into a complete and utter pinnock? Because if so, I've got an idea about what might have happened to you to fill your head with such utter nonsense. Um, Nigel, what was it you were saying about tectonic shifts? Oh, only that the slightest shift in the delicate topsoil could result in a sinkhole, the size of which would easily swallow this small party, sending them plummeting down thousands of feet below the surface to be trapped forever in a rocky tomb. Now that you mention it, I don't actually feel my tummy rumbling. And um, that's all the time we have for the Lost and Found Hour. Uh, up next, how you can stay cool this summer and hopefully escape from any caverns that you're trapped in.
Any food for you? Come on, Michelle. We'll go have a look. Most of it's in the pantry. That is the third door on the left. No, that's the toilet. Ah, that's better. Try the fourth door. Found it. What did she bring? Canned food, I suppose. Only on the first four shelves. How many shelves are there? Eight. The fourth and fifth shelves have different kinds of cereal. All families like cats. Above that there is chips, biscuits, health food, a box of oranges and free teddy bears. <laughs> is that all? Oh no. Then there's the Eskies. Eskies! Bless, Bless you. you. No, I said Eskies. And what did Mummy pack in here for her little darling? One of them has cans of drink and four litres of milk. This one has sausages. And the third? This one is full of frozen pizza. Hmm. Doesn't your mum know you can't cook pizza on an open fire? That's why there's a microwave oven in the kitchenette. A microwave? You can't run that on batteries. You need power. But let me guess, your mum packed an extra long extension cord. She said I wouldn't need one. Why not? Because dad fitted a generator. There's also a TV, sound system, computer, and electric blanket. You can't put an electric blanket on the ground. Where are you planning on putting it? Hey, there's a double bed in here. Look where they are now. The witch is witch. Do at the witch is a wild. Welcome, Merle. So, what have you been doing with yourself since the last witchies? I've been writing a new book for kids, working with this amazing witch called Mrs. Frizzle. She helps kids learn about magic, the dangers of magic, and even road safety. Hope to get a long-running TV series out of it this year. And the sixth nominee, what are your thoughts about that? An extra nominee? I don't know about that. I feel an extra character ruins the narrative. No, she is an educator. Um, I really don't know. Witches work better alone, and if there is an even number of us, they might make us do group work. Do group work. Children. 
a belly. Two saucepans, a wok kettle, and an electric fry pan. Eating utensils. Royal Dalton cookery and Wiltshire cutlery setting for 12. Torch. Spotlight. Ah. First aid kit. Hey, she's got an after date, but people are in here. What about a compass? Satna, GPS, Serena, and radar. What about hand warmers for when it gets cold later? I found the controls for adaptive heating system on the third floor. Third, third floor? floor. give up all the stuff your mum packed just for a day hike. I'm surprised your mum didn't come along with you. Wait, did she? No, of course not. Yes, Carl. If you and your friends have finished playing, wash your hands and come in for lunch. So important, Mang. The glitz, the glamour, and the drama. Oh, these shows are so dramatic. Ooh, over 250 years of the same five witches, in the same five gowns, with the same five talents. Yeah. This year, with a six nominee, and a nominee that's so drastically different from the others. Mm. It's real. Oh, negative gossip. Who do you think will take it out this year? Well... Angus Fatshade, beloved father, husband, mass murderer. Damn. Olga Ratchray, beloved wife, co-conspirator of Richard III, never mind. Grigor Ratchray, no to his friends as homicidal maniac. O oh, noble Ratchrays of yore, I implore you, show me the true nature of our family's name. What is it? We haven't got a I... I... Well, actually, we're not overly busy. I'm Patty Ratchray, and I've came to seek tales of our family's past. Were we noble in our pursuits? Of course, I fought for the people. I was going to bring down the class system by blowing up the Melbourne Exhibition Building. Oh, okay. Like a cool kind of Guy Fawkes vibe? And then stole by someone's governor! What about you in the rather ornate robes? I sought after the fabled sapling of Evan Densoria. Nice! Caring for the environment. So I could use it to blackmail the king! Well, we dug for our fortune in the whole gold mine. Okay, greedy, but not evil per se. And brutally murdered all who stood in our way. <laughs> <laughs> Did any of you fight for honour, valour, or the good of your fellow men? I just wanted to convert everyone to Christianity. I sense there's a but coming, by which I mean crush piracy, depose my father, and rule the Caribbean with an iron fist, my superior mind, and an army of well choreographed nuns. That's a bit evil and preachy. I'm Count Rattray the Immortal. I will reclaim my lands. I will reign with terror and fire. No, no, you're meant to sugarcoat in the first bit. And the world will tremble at my name. 
Moving on. Oh, here's a winner. Cupid, Rattray, Greek God of Love. That sounds nice. Actually, I'm the girl of superficial love, cursed forever to a child's form after trying to murder most of my family and seize power in a daring coup. So you're all dastardly fiends, misanthropic and miscreants, and generally not very nice people, who to a man plan to disrupt the balance of power to your own gains? I would, I would have gotten, gotten away, away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. about that. What? Oh, come on! Miss Spellman! That's it! Get out of my swamp! Well, you're in my studio. So, it's okay. Cut. Cut. What, Sam? What? Oh. Is that... <laughs> Boy, 
boy, do we have a treat for you today, viewers. Team BBs headed into the Australian bush in search of some of the most elusive creatures we can't find. Tell them what we got in store, Riley. You should know already. I'm trying to build audience excitement. Whatever. We're looking for the impossible to find. Drop there. They don't exist. This is stupid. This is going to be epic. That was an excellent shot, Riley. I beg to differ. Regardless, we're about to see some of the most beautiful parts of the Australian bush and pick up the trail of the, the drop, drop bear. bear. Follow Plus. us. Do you see this, viewers? This is some scratchings from a drop bear. Mm, yeah, I really smell the musky scent that the drop bear's left here. Did you smell its wee? Gross. It's the smell of success, Alex. Dear viewer, not only are we on the trail of the drop bear, with this evidence, we can prove for once and for all, the drop bear exists. This is gonna blow people's minds. It's gonna be the documentary of the century. Yes, yes it is. is. It's wombat urine. Ha! Wombat wee. Oh, I'm back here and oh, that's, I think I'm gonna be sick. Is that it? So the wombat thing, wombat weave. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Whatever. It was a setback. But viewers, we're back on the trail. We're searching for the drop bear through this section of bush. Aren't they meant to live in trees? They obviously need to climb up a new tree once they drop. Duh. Back to the hunt. All right, this is where we're going to cut to a montage of you searching for the drop bear. All the best documentaries have montages. Even music videos have montages. You can do so much with a montage. I love montages. Really awesome drop bear montage. Was that a drop bear or just a mirage? You gotta look up, you gotta look up into the tree How good is this drop bear montage? The drop bears must have some good camouflage You'll never find one, you're never gonna find a drop bear Maybe you're right. Maybe the whole drop bear is a myth. Maybe we're out here working my butt off looking for something that someone just made up around the fire. I might as well be looking for the bunyip or the yeti. Uh, Chris? Just let me vent, Riley. And then I thought I told you so stuff from you either, Alex. Um, Chris? Uh, we've got to go. What, Sam? Uh, what? Oh, it's a... Uh, a drop there. Ah. Nice work, fellas. The cold feels right. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Now there's some music to my ears. Welcome to the Colville Gripe Hour. Peter and Lynette here, coming to you live and recorded from local campground, Benedigan Park. Today we have Eileen Temple from the Girl Guides and James Corduroy from the Scouts Association here to talk to us about the competing use of the local campground, Benedigan Park. Hello, thanks for allowing me here today. I'd like to discuss how our current booking system is affecting our local community groups. I don't see a problem with it. First in, best dressed. That's because you and your scouts have created fortifications on all the campsites. Eileen, what does this mean for the community groups that rely on the park for camping spaces? Well, Peter, what this means for the other campers is they're trying to set up their tents in unusual places, on hills, in swamps, in trees, all to avoid the ridiculous traps the scouts have set. I believe you'll find they're simply cooking trenches and camp oven trebuchets. See? He admits it! The scouts are making traps lined with hot coals, all to block other campers. But how will this affect the other users of Burnettingham Park? The other local community groups that use Burnettingham Park will suffer the most. 
It's these hooligans creating their barricades and complicated obstacle courses that are made with no regard for other bookings and this could cripple those organisations. Well, the obstacle courses are open to everyone. I get that the senior croquet club might not enjoy the mud pit we've put in the middle of their lawn, but they could just use it as a mud bar. But surely the district commissioner wouldn't just boot you out with no other plan for where you can camp. But that's exactly what happened. The local scouts organisation have done what's best for their own interest, without any thought for our counterparts. Well, that's not exactly what happened. Well, here's hoping that whatever the solution is, that they find it soon. Oh, but they won't. This double booking problem will just meander along and meanwhile, we'll all have to put up with it. Typical. And on that spirited note... In I many ways, it is community organisations like this one that are the lifeblood of Colville. And besides, all of our ideas have been passed by the district commissioner who has given their blessing. <laughs> Don't even get me started on the booking officer. Who is he? What is he even doing? Who makes the bookings? Where do I get contact information for the district commissioner? This whole thing is a shambles. Well, I guess that's me. I'm the district commissioner. And on that note, we... This simply cannot be the way that a booking system should be run. You can't just going on doing whatever you like. The truth will out, Mr. District Commissioner. The truth will out. We could just come together. I'll arrange you with the booking officer, who is also me. And on that note, it is time for us to say goodbye.
welcome our Spellman, Sir Brian Spellman. As you know, you are the first ever warlock to be nominated for the Witchies. How do you feel about that? I'm happy to be here. I don't know how it'll go down with the other contestants, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And, you know, the other contestants are expecting your sister. I don't expect that'll be an issue. Well, we shall see who is the witchiest witch. Well, that was a bust. Just like we said, Patricia, it's in your blood. So, young whipsnapper, are you ready to join the family business? Never. You're a bunch of self-centered jerks. The authorities will never let you get away with this. The authorities? <laughs> Did you hear that, dear? As if the police can stop us. We've broken out of their jails, bamboozled their officers, and generally outwitted them since the beginning of time. Well, I'll just have to stand in your way myself. You don't mean... On your own? Outside of a law? Like a vigilante? Oh, I'm so proud. We all are. No, wait, I didn't mean... Oh, of course. We won't be going easy on you. You bet. You better bring your A-game. I once trapped 40 people in a collapsing cave, you know. Don't worry. They don't call me Batty Patty for nothing. <laughs> Are you going? a long way We'll see it through There might be some hard times I'll take a chance And if I don't make it We'll still be friends In this life that we all live We can take what the world can give If we have someone we can share it with it's great to know that we have support from our friends and our family And it's nice, and it's nice when someone's going my way Are you going my way? Yes, I'm with you It might be just one way We'll make it too And if I should fall down
bitch is which you do after when she's a Ladies and gentlemen, magical guests, creatures, and anyone in between, finally, the crowning of the Witchiest Witch Award that ever is or was, the winner of the 252nd Annual Witch Witch is the Witchiest Witch Award is Drum roll, please. Sir Brian Spellman. For well, let's be honest, not being one of them. Oh my god, thank you so much. Frizzle, frizzle! But he's not even a verified content creator. Sir Brian Spellman, the teenage warlock. How are you supposed to make a TV show out of that? It should have been Miss Spellman. What? What are your thoughts about that? Oh, Perry, what a man. <laughs> this is the Colville Truth Hour. Bring the truth live to your jail cell on location. There you have it. The truth will set you free. Or will it? Following in the footpaths of all popular podcasts, we're taking a look at true crime and where the local law enforcement are following due processes. Or is there a glaring hole in this case and these beloved larrikins were just laughing a little too loud? From the local constabulary is Sergeant McGee and his colleague, Constable Bumbles. Welcome. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Let's cut to the chase. (laughs) The chase is on. That was a little enthusiastic. That's absolutely true. Bumbles often takes me literally which shows he is a man of action. Bubbles, these are dangerous times. You can't just be running off like that. Sarge? Well, there's murder afoot. Who would want to murder a foot, Sarge? No, I mean, there's murder at hand, Bumbles. Well, is it a hand or a foot, Sarge? Now, all I'm saying is we have to be on our toes, Bumbles. Because of the feet, Sarge. Um, wait, what? There is something very, very wrong in our fair town. How does the police explain the rising convictions of crimes such as jaywalking, theft of Wi-Fi, and, um, loitering? An excellent question. An excellent question. I too think it was an excellent question. Are you going to answer it? No. Constable Bumbles. Oh, well, you see it. He also has nothing to say. Why not? Shouldn't there be transparency about how the good citizens of Colville are being persecuted by the local police? Yes, and shouldn't the citizens of Colville know why jaywalking has become the most policed activity in the valley? We're just doing our bit to keep Colville safe. Yeah, you can't catch all the big crimes when you're walking the beat. You can only catch the on-foot crimes. Don't you have police vehicles? We did, we did, until uh, Bumbles lost them. Forgot where they parked in. You mean it? You have multiple vehicles? No, I I mean them. There you have it, listeners. The truth. Now we will see if this powerful truth will set these ordinary locals free. That's enough of that. You're both under arrest. What for? What for? I'll give you the what for. What for, Sarge? For disrespecting a police officer, for jaywalking, for theft of Wi-Fi, and frankly, a poorly produced podcast. Damn, he's got us there. The government is shutting us down as we speak. Don't give in, Colville. The truth is somewhere. Stop recording. The truth is somewhere. Stop recording. Nothing can stop us, and we are Look at us 
this year we are still a Showtime family. You couldn't come to us so we had a blast putting this together so we could bring our show to you. We can't wait to go back on stage next year. No original ideas were harmed in the making of this production. Two more weeks to go till we see one another again. But in the meantime, we'll struggle along somehow as best we can. It's clear that in the few short months between, we will feel so lonely or sad. Because the memories are bringing us all closer to our next show time. Out in the sunshine, we're ready to go There's one thing we show time is low She is a wonderful life Whether in highlands or down in the dale Over the river or onto the bale We hike along the rainbow trail She is a wonderful life When your eyes are about to scout and you're as happy as a king If you're trekking in the meadow or a bird upon the wing in the autumn or the winter or the summer or the spring It's the most remarkable thing Out of the gang, yeah, and journeying to Lands of adventure are waiting for you You'll find your daydreams coming true Gee, it's a wonderful life You bet it's a wonderful, gee, it's a wonderful Gee, it's a wonderful Showtime, cause of COVID-19 But then we made the movie you are watching on your screen We still came together even though we were apart The showtime remains right here in my heart So as we go along, we've got a little song We keep on singing night and day Oh! 
Shit!